Welcome back, everybody, to Ask Top, sponsored by MentorMilitary.com. I'm your host, Command Sergeant Major Retired Mark Garrett. And today, in this episode, we're going to talk about how to properly fill out a DA Form 4856. There's a lot of different ways to fill out a 4856 that are correct, and there's also a lot of ways to fill it out where it's incorrect and potentially would not be legally sufficient for some actions, whether that's an Article 15, whether that's a separation action. So you want to make sure that whatever you do, it's at least legally sufficient or serves the purpose of the counseling. Now, with that said, let's get to it. What's the purpose of our counseling? One of the biggest purposes of counseling that's overlooked is telling a soldier they did a good job. So, you know, we can verbally tell them they did a great job, and that means a lot. But when you take a few minutes just to put something down on paper, it means a lot to somebody. Set your soldier up for success. This counseling is not designed to belittle or to destroy the individual. It's designed to set them up for success so they can overcome and achieve their goals. Put the facts on the table. Let's not be emotional. Let's not be unspecific. Let's talk facts. There are times when perceptions will come into play, and those could be a perception of an inappropriate relationship, but you have to frame those around specifics of why that perception is there. Got to help the soldier develop a plan of action. You can guide them, coach them, teach them, but the goal here is that they come up with their plan of action so that they own it and they're more likely to do it and achieve their goal. So let's talk about research. Do your research before you start writing. If you don't do your research, you tend to be emotional when you start writing. Understand the situation. Look at it from all sides, from 360. Gather what information you can. Put down the facts. Then begin to construct your counseling statement. What regulations cover this issue? Make sure you read them. Does it say could, should, would, may? Or does it say must and will? Because there's a lot of difference between those words because those determine what is required, what action you must take, what actions you can recommend, and how do you solve it at the lowest possible level. Again, set the soldier up for success. By doing your homework, making sure you know the specifics, the facts, the regulations, and the requirements, you now have the ability to frame a relationship. ability to frame a counseling statement. So we're going to draft the counseling statement. We're not going to give this draft to the soldier. This is our roadmap to the counseling session. We're going to use this to guide our discussion. If we discover new information, the soldier brings up something and we're like, hey, we didn't know that. We need to adjust our counseling statement. Also, when you think about new information, you need to be asking the soldier open-ended questions, not yes-no questions. You're looking for data. Ask open-ended questions that require them to respond. Once you have adjusted the counseling statement, now you're going to go get their signature. So let's look at the administrative data. All that's uh, self-explanatory. I am going to talk about the counseling date because there's a specific point I want to talk about in the session closing block. Let's say that you were, um, you were counseled on 1 July verbally for an incident, but you were not um, counseled formally until 1 August. Or let's say an event happened on 1 July and nothing happened. Nobody counseled you. Your squad leader saw it, but it just kind of happened. Now, 1 August comes around and platoon sergeant wants you counseled for that event. So what does the squad leader do? What date goes there? Well, there could be a date of 1 July put there, and the purpose of counseling could say something like, uh, on 1 July, uh, I verbally counseled you for the following, or it could the date of counseling could reflect 1 August. 
and it could simply say, on 1 July, I observed you doing blah, blah, blah. That date is important because the date that goes there and how the counseling statement is written determines if information on the counseling statement was falsified. I'll go over that as we get the session closing so you can kind of grab what I'm saying. So the purpose of the counseling is going to be very factual and specific. We're going to, dis this is uh, non-compliance with overweight, so how did we find out about it? Uh, discuss non-compliance, courses of action, solutions, and potential actions for adverse, that could adversely affect the soldier's career. Key points of discussion is the meat and potatoes of the counseling statement. This is where we're going to tell the soldier, in this case, hey, you, were, you weighed in at this weight, your authorized weight is this, you're being enrolled in the overweight program, here are the steps required by regulation. Um, and then we're going to finish that up with a magic statement. It, for those of you not familiar with that, the magic statement is a paragraph that describes certain things that could happen to include separation, what types of discharges you can receive, what type of benefits you may or may not be entitled to. So keep this very descriptive, unemotional, and try and guide it towards something positive. So our plan of action, this is where the soldier comes up with their plan. In some cases, like this with an overweight uh, statement, you're going to list some specific things they have to do, and you know they either agree or don't agree. But the goal of most plans of action are to get the soldier to develop their own plan of action so that they own it. When they own it, they're more likely to do it. So I brought this up earlier. We're going to talk about backdating a counseling statement. So in the beginning, I said something happened on 1 July. You were either verbally counseled for it or you weren't counseled at all. Now you're getting counseled and it's 1 August. What date goes in the session closing box? 1 July or 1 August? My opinion, 1 August goes in the date of session closing. That's the date you're actually signing it. 1 July could go in the front part of the counseling statement in part one if um, the counselor wanted to do that. But in my opinion, one August should go on the front as well. And the purpose of the counseling statement should read something like, on one July, you were verbally counseled for, or I observed you doing this. Dating or backdating a counseling statement is inappropriate um, and it leads to a question of credibility when you backdate a uh, counseling statement. Disagree. What does disagree mean? Why is it there? Um, you know, when I was in, there was this myth that your signature did not mean you agreed with something. It just meant that uh, the counseling took place. Where did that come from? Well, DA PAM 623-3 page 93, and it also is a reference in several other places, states, rated NCO signature does not constitute agreement or disagreement with the evaluation of the rater or senior rater. Now, somehow, that transformed during my time in the Army into, hey, your signature just means we counseled you. So go ahead and agree with it because we counseled you. If you disagree with anything, Mark, disagree. And then, in the session closing block, write down why you disagree. Because this is your chance to tell your side of the story of what went on. So that when a senior leader looks at the document, they go, oh, that's what happened. Maybe I need to be asking some questions. Versus somebody recommending somebody for an Article 15, corrective training, revocation of privileges, whatever it is, and they see agree on the back and they go, oh, it must have happened that way. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that corrective training or whatever was recommended. Very important to disagree if there is reason to disagree. Leader responsibilities, this is where you tell the soldier what you're going to do. This is the agreement between you and the soldier. 
The soldier builds the plan of action and support with you, and you tell them how you're going to support them so that they're set up for success. Assessment. To me, this is the most important part of the counseling form when it comes to making it meaningful. This is your follow-up session. Did we achieve our goals? Now, what's so important about this section? Well, you're going to follow up depending on what occurred. It may be a couple days from the date of occurrence. It may be three months. It's all dependent on the situation, but it must be followed up on. So let's say, for example, a soldier uh, gets recommended for an Article 15 because of disrespect, and they're given a formal counseling to recommend that punishment. Now, let's say a month and a half later, they've completed all their punishment, and the counselor comes in and says, soldier received an Article 15, completed the punishment phase, and is doing well. That's a follow-up. It's done. The assessment is done. Now, let's say that there's going to be a separation action. Well, if you don't fill out this assessment, this form is not complete. And a good JAG officer is going to say, hey, none of these assessment blocks are filled out. Therefore, this form is not complete. Therefore, you can't use it in the separation package. Well, Mark, where did you get that at? You're not a JAG guy. No, I'm not. But in some old doctrine, 622, Appendix B, B11, page B20, it states, during an event-oriented counseling session, the counseling session is not complete until this block is complete. So, while this is obsolete doctrine, it shows the military's intent. And I would argue that this is still relevant today. Food for thought. Make sure you complete your assessments. So what did we discuss today? Research what you're doing. Know before you write. Draft your document. Set the soldier up for success. Counsel. Uh, then adjust the counseling statement. Provide the document for signature. Conduct your assessment. And both of you receive a copy of the counseling. If you look in the footer of the document, it specifically says that a soldier and counselor will receive a copy. Now, I'd like you to reach out to us and follow us on Facebook. And reach down and hit that subscribe button for our YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up, thumbs down. Make sure you give us some comments. And don't forget to visit us at MentorMilitary.com. Until our next episode... Stay safe and stay healthy.